day everybody um, and allow me to thank the New Media Consortium and the HP Catalyst uh, Initiative for affording me the opportunity to speak to you today about the experience with STEM education using technologies uh, in Africa. Um, I feel very honored to be talking to all of you and I look forward to uh, uh, some robust uh, conversation on this uh, very challenging topic. Um, I thought it would be useful to locate the conversation around uh, the delivery of STEM education in particular within the context of the systemic crisis in education in Africa in, in, in general. Um, what has been uh, uh, spoken about and, and written about quite extensively is uh, that there is an endemic crisis uh, in education delivery across the continent. Um, and the crisis uh, assu assumes the form of a chronic shortage of qualified teachers in general in the region to the tune of an estimated 1.9 million teachers are needed uh, by 2015 to deliver, to deliver on universal primary schooling alone. Um, and this has uh, been estimated by UNESCO in 2011. Um, and it gives us an indication of uh, the, the depth of the problem that we face with in the teaching system uh, in general. Um, and within that, uh, there are an even greater shortage of uh, math, science, technology and engineering teachers in particular um, in the schooling system and even less in uh, the higher education systems in the region. Um, and that has a direct effect on the performance of STEM learning in schools which um, are reflected in the poor performance um, and, and low grades that learners have been uh, achieving uh, across uh, the K-12 um, sector in each of the countries across the region. Um, in South Africa that problem is particularly acute. Um, South Africa uh, scored extremely low on the TIM survey, the most recent TIM survey, and it, that has been quite consistent. Um, a more recent um, evaluation and assessment study that has been produced in South Africa in, um, in fact in 2011 uh, revealed exceptionally low scores in uh, literacy and numeracy in particular at grade 3 level. Um, and uh, in subsequent uh, surveys and, and tests that have been uh, done in South Africa, there is a consistent picture of uh, extremely poor performance in general across different grades and particularly amongst girls um, in schools. Um, and that this is also the case in a number of countries across the region, in Namibia, in Zimbabwe. Um, there has been a study that showed that Nigeria has performed uh, a lot better in, uh, in secondary science um, a performance amongst learners. Um, but um, on the whole, uh, there, is, uh, there is a strong indication still of a declining performance in, uh, in STEM uh, learning. Amongst, uh, amongst learners in particular. And that this is a function also of a dire lack of education resources, poor infrastructure in schools, um, an acute uh, shortage of textbooks, of um, science labs. Um, and this takes place in the context also of ambitious uh, curriculum reform in STEM education and the pressure that that applies on teachers um, who are in general also uh, lacking confidence in the subject matter. Um, and uh, there's also increasing studies that have shown that um, the poor performance uh, amongst learners is also a function of the lack of encouragement in the home environment amongst the learners um, and in the community in uh, learning math and science. Um, having said that, um, uh, the STEM education is uh, considered a priority at policy level in a number of countries and that have formed part of broader economic strategies um, that have also been reflected in general education strategies that focus on STEM education as well as the integration of information and communication technologies in education systems. Certainly at policy level, um, the practice however is a lot more challenging but having said that, um, there have been a, a number of dedicated initiatives that focus on enhancing research capacity in, uh, in STEM at tertiary level. 
um, that focus on um, uh, specific schools that can uh, enhance their performance, particularly in math and science, um, and that focus on supporting teachers in service and at pre-service level in their professional development um, in the teaching of, uh, of STEM education. Um, and um, a number of national STEM related competitions have been uh, introduced in countries to motivate and incentivize learners uh, to, to take a keen interest in the subject. And a host of initiatives have been underway to also support schools in the provisioning of resources uh, in uh, STEM curriculum content to support teachers um, and, and the delivery of, of the subject. Um, there's uh, also been a sea change in the approach to STEM learning in the national education systems that have been part of broader uh, curriculum reform initiatives in the region. So there's a stronger emphasis on uh, STEM subjects being compulsory subjects. Um, there's a stronger focus on learner-centeredness, at least at the policy level, and which have only been applied to some extent in classroom practice. There's also been a stronger approach towards um, a real-world uh, integration of the learning of, uh, of STEM subjects um, and integrating the social experiences of learners in their communities, in their families. Um, and here the best example is um, how uh, awareness raising around HIV and AIDS prevention um, and the integration of the teaching of science and um, challenging traditional belief systems uh, that militate against um, the um, prevention of uh, HIV AIDS have been quite um, an, an interesting area of intervention. Um, and also, as I've indicated earlier on, there's a, there's a stronger attention is being given to early learning because uh, there's uh, been a number of studies that shows that um, improved performance uh, amongst older learners uh, is, um, is a function of attention to early learning of STEM subjects uh, in, in the schooling system, but also in terms of um, stronger parental and community involvement in support of, of learners uh, learning STEM subjects. Um, and this is a, a process that's still underway in terms of enhancing um, STEM learning in the schooling systems in the region in general. Um, now, whilst on the one hand there has been a number of uh, dedicated initiatives that focus on uh, the promotion of STEM education, um, there have also been almost in parallel a number of um, ICT integrated um, uh, pilot initiatives as well as some large-scale initiatives that explore how technology can play a supportive and enabling role. And this ranges from the use of uh, interactive radio instruction, certainly in environments where there's poor infrastructure, large classrooms, um, especially at primary school level, um, the broadcast of uh, radio content in, in STEM uh, subjects have proven to be quite uh, an effective way in supporting uh, the delivery of curriculum and also in supporting teachers in their classroom practice in countries like Zambia and Kenya where IRI have been uh, tried quite extensively. Um, similarly, uh, there has been over the last 10 years now um, the uh, establishment of a dedicated television broadcast channel uh, in education that beams across Africa and 15 African countries um, by the Mindset Network um, in, uh, that's based in South Africa and the emphasis has been on STEM uh, education delivery um, uh, so there are um, video content that's uh, available uh, on the um, uh, education broadcast channel that um, historically has been delivered um, as uh, broadcast programs uh, at dedicated times for learners to, to engage with um, often in classroom practice with, uh, with some challenges, but more recently uh, they've been able to uh, make this available as video on demand uh, through uh, satellite datacast systems um, and in some cases through the mobile phone um, as a conduit for the delivery of video on demand as well uh, in a number of countries. Uh, another example of um, where technologies uh, have been used uh, in a mainstream and large-scale and integrated way 
is uh, through the rollout of PC labs in all schools in the province of the Western Cape in South Africa through the Kanya project where all schools have access to uh, PC labs that have been pre-installed with STEM content um, and uh, teachers then use this uh, to support the classroom practice in the delivery of the STEM curriculum. Uh, the focus here has been predominantly on formal uh, learning in within classroom settings, um, but that has been uh, one effective way in which uh, the technologies have supported the delivery of the curriculum uh, in this particular case. There's also a growing <coughs> pardon me, proliferation of open education resources, um, certainly in science, math and technology content and curriculum content in particular in Africa through the OER Africa Initiative and through the establishment of national education portals that are sourcing um, STEM related content that can be used and accessed by teachers and learners um, and that is actually a growing phenomenon in the region. Um, and we've also had some countries where uh, governments have decided to roll out laptops to learners in uh, particularly in the remote areas at primary school level and um, the best example here is the One Laptop Per Child project in Rwanda which has been pre-installed with uh, science and math content, content for both learners and teachers where they could use them both uh, in a self-directed, uh, self-paced way outside of classroom practice as well as within the classroom. Um, then this has been accompanied with uh, teacher training. Um, and more recently, over the last five years, we've seen um, a number of initiatives that have focused on the use of the mobile phone in uh, supporting uh, math education in particular. There have been a number of um, pilot projects that uh, are documented some here in this slide, uh, which have tried uh, to, to explore how um, mobile phones can uh, support the more uh, pervasive delivery of math education. And the best example here is um, the delivery of the Nokia Mobile Mathematics Project in South Africa, which have targeted grade 10 learners uh, in their learning of mathematics. Um, and this project is now uh, extended by 2012, it's uh, aiming to reach 60,000 learners with uh, uh, access to 10,000 um, mathematics exercises, tests, quizzes, and it's found so far that um, there has been an increase in math competencies amongst these learners as well as um, uh, increasing use of the mobile devices um, outside of classroom practice. Um, in, uh, in in formalized settings, um, and this points uh, significantly to the potential that mobile phones hold for um, supporting the delivery of STEM education. And why that's significant is because it is um, uh, so uh, universally available uh, in Africa. Um, at this stage, there's an estimated 734 million people have access to some form of mobile subscription. Uh, predominantly amongst young people, um, learners in particular, um, and that that opens up uh, significant potential and avenues for learning of STEM in particular. Um, and so at this stage, what we have is um, a significant potential that the new technologies enable for improving uh, the education systems in general and certainly STEM education in particular. Um, there are examples uh, at a small scale where uh, mobile phones, for example, have uh, enabled access to uh, open and distance learning in marginalized, poor, remote rural areas uh, for both teachers and their teacher development programs as well as uh, for learners. There are um, small scale pilots that have demonstrated that uh, mobile phones and um, laptops have been able to support teachers uh, in their professional development uh, in STEM education, um, that they've been able to support uh, classroom delivery um, as well as improved collaboration amongst teachers. Um, there have also been examples of how um, the technologies have opened up access to knowledge networks and STEM research um, for teachers and uh, education researchers uh, in an attempt to improve education delivery. 
Um, and there are a few uh, examples that also show that um, the technologies have enabled uh, improved parental and community involvement with learners and teachers in support of uh, the delivery of STEM education. Now, the reality is that um, there is uh, still limited evidence that demonstrates uh, the effectiveness of how technologies have been able to support the delivery of STEM education. And what we have is a number of um, anecdotal evidence um, and descriptions of um, possibilities and potential that the technologies hold. Um, but that certainly leaves um, uh, open uh, uh, the prospects for further exploration of how the education systems can be improved uh, over the coming years. Um, and with that, um, how uh, the uh, economic growth in the region uh, can can be improved uh, with improved education delivery. Um, and at the heart of this lies the prospect of uh, the eradication of extreme poverty in Africa and that that has been uh, the focus of um, a number of government policy. So it is hoped that over the course of the next decade, um, a significant inroads would be made in the eradication of poverty and that the uh, improvement in the delivery of STEM education could uh, prove to play quite a significant role in that respect. Thank you very much for your time. I look forward to um, your questions and comments um, and to learn from you uh, on this very uh, challenging yet exciting uh, subject. Thank you very much.